All right. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm just sitting and thinking this, what a privilege, what a privilege it is, uh, as the Bible says, for uh, men and brethren to get together and join one another and, and uh, praise the Lord and feel his presence. You know, Amen. Uh, I'm so glad this morning that uh, he's still on the throne. I mean, he'll always be there. And we know right how to get in touch with him. That's through prayer, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're, we're, uh, we should be set ready on go. Amen. Seeing his blessing. We want to study some this morning in the book of, Jer of uh, Hebrews. And uh, we're going to study a little bit in Jeremiah also. But in Hebrews 12, 1, where you can turn the Bible to, we'll start reading there a little bit. Hebrews 12, 1. <clears throat> we want to talk to you a little bit this morning about running running a race and uh, we'll get into the part there in just a little bit but uh, in verse 1 of uh, chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race. Now, first of all, if you're going to run a race, you're going to have to have patience. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to have, there's so many obstacles a lot of times in your way, and I'm not just talking about getting out here and running up and down the road, but this is living for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there's these, these obstacles that get in your way, and so it takes patience. But now notice here, he's talking about a cloud of witnesses. Back over in chapter 11, uh, we want to just read just a little bit to you uh, concerning this cloud of witnesses I believe that he's referring to. And we Amen. see here, uh, the, the, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And then he gives us a whole list of Bible people that lived years, uh, hundreds of years ago. And uh, we see there's a faith of, of, uh, uh, of Abel and uh, of uh, Enoch and a whole bunch of these, uh, even Noah. And uh, we just go down the line and see a bunch of them. And then we'll read them all, Abraham, Moses, and all of these, but now this is what he's talking about here in our lesson this morning. He says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And these witnesses, uh, they are a witness is one that sees things or they witness something and they tell others about it. And we're, we, we have this cloud of uh, our, our understanding in God's word the words that they have by faith they did this and by faith they did this and by faith they did this and so he's saying here this morning that we need to run this race and be patient mm -hmm. and they were running a race and they were very patient and they had a whole lot more to go through than we do right. this day and time we have got a protection or we used to have of the law and all this to protect us from uh people coming in and taking our church away and and uh mistreating us and and, uh, and slandering us and all these things but now notice he says here these cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and in a weight, and in, in, a, in a race, is what you're talking about. And, and while I'm thinking about it this morning, this race that Paul, was, uh, the Hebrew writer, was talking about here, uh, I think it, it would, it, in, in his time, they had these big events, sort of like we have the uh, Olympics and things like that. And every, it was a thing that everybody got uh, gathered into, and the real important thing was all this to see these races run. And he's using this as an example uh, to get across the point about running a race. And, mm -hmm. and, and those people would watch those great runners. We see them on the, on the TVs and all this, and in these meets uh, during these Olympic games and all this. And this is what Paul was using as a reference to it because he said, and uh, he says, let us lay aside every weight. And we know this morning, the only time that a person needs a weight is when he's lifting weights. 
And right. we have those that, that lift weights, and they that's what they do. But a, a man that's running or a, a person that's running does not need something hanging onto his feet or onto his back or whatever to slow him down. And, he, and he's talking about, he's given an example this morning of us this morning as we are witnesses to Christ, as we try to serve him. And, and run the race, and that is to get out and tell others about him, and we don't right. do that. The weights that so easily beset us, and that is the discouragement of the world and the uh, things that people say for us, we don't need to let that happen. We don't need to let it uh, encourage, uh, discourage us. And so he's saying, he says here, let, lay aside every weight and the, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And this beset is a snare. He's talking about something that will snare you, grab you, hold you down, and things of this nature. And you know this morning, and I know this morning, that you get out here and try to do something that's uh, pleasing to the Lord. And you have these, these, these hindrances, these snares, these, these weights that, that bog you down. And there's the, the Satan himself out there with that evil spirit trying mm -hmm. to hinder us. And even this morning, I'm sure that we felt a little bit of it this morning as we was trying to get ready for uh, church and as we were right. trying to get something ready to take with us and, and something to, to uh, study in and, and something to read about. Listen, he's always there. He's on that, he's on that path and he's got his, his arm out ready to snare you as you run by or slow you down or hinder you, make you fall or whatever. Right. And I mean, this may be sounding silly, but listen, he's there and these are some of the things that happens to us along the way and so when we do stumble listen there's no need to lay there just get up and go again because listen you, you got to run this race with patience mm -hmm. you got to be content if you fall you say well I need to get up and not do that again and have patience so he's saying here this morning uh, he said run let us run with patience mm -hmm. the race that is set before us and listen, this morning when God called you, when God chose you uh, in eternity, and then he turned, come and called you, evidently, I mean, right away, there was a race set before you. And he didn't expect you to sit on the stool, do nothing, and put on a stick of do less, but he expects you to get up, right. and be about his business, and to understand if when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and say witness to that person, tell that person about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And do it. Because listen, if he tells you to do it, you may get you may get a little uh snare there, but the thing of it is, you do what the Holy Spirit Amen. tells you to do, and you can go away and be and say, I did what you asked me to do. And uh, the thing of it is, if you don't then you've got that problem to answer to. So right. that's what that's one of the things that you're put here for. That is to encourage other people. And you can be an encouragement to people and even though they'll hark and spit and, and do everything against what you say, you tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ and it has a it has something like stink that sticks to it. And it, it, it and that that sticks to that person's mind, and the Holy Spirit can can use that to in, uh, encourage that people. So this is this is this is something that we need to think about. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the Creator, yeah. and the and, and and He's going to finish everything that He had for us to do, and He's going to bring us home to be with Him in glory. So he says here, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And despising, despising the shame was that the sin that was involved in his earthly ministry uh, and the things that like that, that's what he despised. He didn't despise the job. He didn't despise God for asking him to come, but he despised that old sinful stuff that he had to uh, and be involved with. But he did it, and he did it perfectly, 
And so Amen. He, done, he was patient and he did it. So notice, here he says here, he's setting, he, he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so this morning, I believe that he is sitting there. Uh, Amen. And, and sometimes, sometimes he gets up because we see it with uh, some of the, one of the, the uh, ones that died and, uh, and he stood up before mm -hmm. and uh, and so listen uh and and i i don't know i don't know what the extent of all that is but listen he is close to the father's right hand Amen. he's making intercession for us because we cannot pray directly to the father like uh, uh but he can he can he can take it to the Father, and we've went through that once before. But that's that's something that we need to understand this morning, people. We have an audience with God, our Father. Amen. Any time that you want to talk to Him, listen. He's sitting there ready to receive your talk if if you if you if you have a desire to do it and do it it's because you love Him. Now, He says here, for consider Him that endured such contradictions of sin. Uh, of, of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So these are some of the things that that we need to we need to understand that Jesus did for us, and we didn't. We don't. We can't do it. We don't mm -hmm. have to. Right. He says here, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as a, unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastising of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. And so this morning, you will get rebuked. Mm -hmm. You are not perfect. Right. And the flesh is what is causing this, but the thing of it is, God has to rebuke you. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he does, when he does, it says here not to get all all tore out of shape, but he says don't faint uh, when you're rebuked. But listen, you take it and you uh, and you try to understand what he's doing because he does it because he loves you and because he wants you to be in his will. And when you're in his will, then he can bless you. Mm -hmm. But listen, when you're out of his will and he has to rebuke you, there's a time, a space there that those blessings are not flowing like they should. And you and I know both that that, that happens to us because so many times we get out of the Lord's will and it's sometimes right. we have to have that little that little chat and uh, and feel a little bit that uh, peace tree limb on us because Amen. we're we're disobedient. So uh, all we can do is is say forgive me and, and and we start again. So I want you to read something this morning in uh, in, in uh, First Corinthians. If you would turn there with me just a minute, First Corinthians uh, <clears throat> nine. Maybe First Corinthians nine. I think I got it here. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 9, 19. Notice. For, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jew I came, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jew to them that are under the law as under the law and that I might gain them that are under the law. Now, we're talking about this morning running the race. And Paul is talking here about the Jew and how that he was running the race or how that he was trying to connect with the Jew and how he was trying to tell them this thing. And this is what we're reading here. To them that are without law or without law being not without law to God, but under law, under the law of, to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. And of course that was grace. To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And this I do, and this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partakers thereof with you. 
Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Now Amen. this is the race that they were talking about over there uh, for, uh, in Hebrews. And there was one that run across the line first. He run, he run the, he run the war race. He won the race. And this is what Paul is talking about here. He, when it sounds like he said, what, the way some people read it, that just one person would run, would, would get to help. Notice. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. So run that ye may obtain. So what he's saying here is that you need to be the best that you can be. Right. You need to run as fast as you can run. You need to continually doing it patiently that you have done all that you can do. And he says in verse 25, and every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. And so Amen. they're saying, we're doing these things that I explained a while ago about uh, being a witness by serving the Lord, running the race, if you would, not for a money value, not for a, a gold crown to set on your head uh, that you can take to the pawn shop and get money out of it, but it's an incorruptible crown, an everlasting life with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. And so this is the incorruptible that he's talking about. He says in verse 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that, that beateth the air. And so what he's saying is, I don't run this thing foolishly, uh, just uh, just beating the air and all of this, and that's that's all I'm accomplishing. But listen, I'm accomplishing something as I run this race. Right here, he says, but in verse 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I sh myself should be a castaway. In other words. I, I do these things and uh, uh, I do them for the love of the ones that I preach it to. So here, this is this is this the reason why that we want to run this race. Now, uh, uh, again, I want I want to turn to uh, Galatians if I can find Galatians this morning and uh, turn to Galatians two. Mark, <laughs> bear with me. Galatians 2 and verse 2. Or we'll just read this, we'll just read the first verse. Uh, then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me, I went up by revelation, or that God told him to go, and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. But privately to them which were of reputation. And these that were of reputation that he's talking about were some of the apostles like John, I believe John and Peter and maybe James. Lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus who was with me being a Greek was compelled to be circumcised. Now what I think this is all about was that they were they were accepting church members into this church now and they were uncircumcised and I think this was the thing that that Paul went up there to talk to them about because he didn't want this to, to be a hindrance in any way but he says now in verse 4 uh, and that because of false brethren unaware, unaware brought in who came in private privately to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage to whom we gave place by subjection no not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might be continued but of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were 
it maketh no difference to me. God accepts no man's person. Amen. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of, of circumcision was unto Peter. And so these, this is why that Paul, this is one of the races, or this is part of his race, and, and he was going back, and he was trying to smooth things out, because, right. listen, there was people said that they spied them out, they looked at them and seen some things, and, and, and they, they brought it up to them and, and, and they were trying to bust the church up and that's the way the devil wants to do. But he says here in uh, uh, verse eight, for he that wrought affections in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas, the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathens and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. And so here is here is the here is some of the some more of the the things that that Peter was trying to uh, uh, I mean Paul was trying to get uh, uh, straightened out among the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Jews and uh, among the, 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 the apostles as far as that goes and so back now let's get back to our lesson one more time here in Hebrews we'll finish up Hebrews okay now in verse 7 if you endure chastening of God of uh, chastening God dealeth with you in verse 7 as with sons, for what son is he whom the father chases not? But if ye be without chastisement, or of our partakers, then then you are bastards and not sons. Right. So this word, I mean, and this word they use as bastards, it's an illegitimate child, and and a lot of people they use this as a a, a, a mean word. But anyway, what it is is a. It's, a, it's an unsaved person. And he says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of the Spirit and live? And Amen. so we this morning, at, we, we, we do respect our fathers. We respect them and, the, and their authority. But listen, there is one that's greater, and that's the one that we will our eternal father god and we respect him with greater greater love than we do with our our worldly father so he said here uh here for they bear in verse 10 for they barely for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness amen and so this is again I want to emphasize this chastisement, and that's what he's talking about. He chastises us, and and, and, and you know the devil will say the Lord's the Lord's not right doing you that way because you you do this and you do that. But listen, people, when 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 you're rebuked of the Holy by the Holy Spirit or by the Lord, the God of Heaven, you be careful with that thing. Amen. Yeah. Because you you'll let this old flesh get in a terrible condition and you'll get to thinking yeah he don't love me uh he, he he's he's picking on me and all these things but listen remember this he loved you so much mm -hmm. that he sent his son to die for you mm -hmm. and uh no greater love no greater love had the man than this that he gave that give his own life for his own friend and and that that this morning uh, should take preeminence over what anything the devil could say to you, and uh, you remember that because uh, he's he's out there, people, and he's he's chomping at the bits, and right. he's wanting to get every everyone he can to uh, quit serving the Lord. He's wanting to get them mad, it, and and it, and it's it's a world now of everything in this world going on, and he's got to open. It seems like everything that he wants to do, he does. 
And so this is some of the things that you uh, you should think about on this on this thing here. Now I want to read just a little bit more to you here, and then, and, and then we'll close. Let's listen to this in verse 17. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come in unto the mount that might be touched and that burns with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and temperance. And the sound of a trumpet and the void voice of words, which voice they had heard, entreated that he would, that the word should not be spoken to them anymore, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it should be stoned for trust. I don't think that's what I was going to read anyway. But anyway, listen, that's, this is this what I wanted to read to you this morning, and I think that I've got all of my notes uh, taken care of this morning, and, and I hope that I hope that some of this will help you and, and uh, bring you back to the thoughts of when you're getting out here and trying to be a help, that you are, you are right in the race. Amen. And, uh, we, we this morning just can be drawn closer to the Lord, and uh, so we want to praise His holy name this morning and thank you for listening to us. We would, would like to dismiss this prayer this morning. Father, this morning we thank you for this privilege that we have, uh, that we can uh, read thy word, and Father, we just pray that each word has found a lodging place in the hearts of those that you would have sent. Thank you so much for this day and the privilege that we have. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen.